after studying this module you shall be able to understand the role of culture in self construal to learn the types of self construal and to analyze the consequences of self construal in various domains the self is an intriguing concept for times in memorial philosophers and thinkers have tried to understand and define the self know thyself goes the famous statement the importance of the social world in the construction of the self was initially emphasized by kule mead and goffman it is now widely understood that culture and self are interrelated to each other Clarkhorn provided one of the classic definitions of culture which emphasized the importance of values. Hofstede defined culture as the collective programming of the mind. He stated that nations differ in various aspects in terms of the national level values. Apart from this kind of analysis, Triandis A all in 1985 used the terms allocentrism and idiocentrism for individual level analysis shorts also emphasized the development of individual level analysis he identified 10 cross culturally valid individual level value dimensions and summarized them along two dimensions conservatism and openness to change and self enhancement versus self transcendence most of the paradigms for understanding social phenomena developed initially in the united states and then spread to other parts of the world one of the most intriguing questions was whether differences in terms of social phenomena are related to dimensions along which the countries differed cross cultural replication studies of many social psychological phenomena has yielded many different results regarding many social psychological phenomena like social loafing fundamental attribution errors conformity etc the results obtained from these studies raise questions as to whether findings from american social psychological studies can be generalized to other cultures cross cultural research suggests that the nature content and structure of the self vary according to one's culture in their highly influential article in the psychological review Marcus and Kitayama argued that one of the critical variables by which culture affects the way we think, feel and act is self-construal. Culture affects how we construe our identity and this self-construal in turn influences our subjective experience in various domains. They differentiated between two fundamentally different perspectives. on the self the independent self construal and the interdependent self construal many western cultures believe in the inherent uniqueness of individuals the selling norm of these cultures is to become independent from others and to express one's unique traits Achieving the cultural goal of independence requires that one construes oneself as an individual whose behavior is organized around one's thoughts, feelings and action rather than around the thoughts, feelings and actions of other people. This view of the self believes in the wholeness and uniqueness of each person's internal attributes it gives rise to the processes of self actualization this self view involves a conception of the self as an autonomous and independent person therefore it is referred to as the independent self construal 
This is also referred to as individualist, egocentric, separate, autonomous and idiocentric. Members of individualist cultures usually come across social contexts which foster an independent self-view more frequently as compared to members of collectivist societies who are more frequently exposed to contexts that foster an interdependent view of the self. Marcus and Kitayama in 1991 proposed that the differences between the US and Japan could be explained in terms of the self-concept wherein the Americans have a more independent self-concept and the Japanese have a more interdependent self-concept. In America, there is a strong emphasis on individuality and how one can stand out among others. This independent self is a bounded, unique, more or less integrated, motivational and cognitive universe, a dynamic center of awareness, emotion, judgment, action, organized into a distinctive whole and set both against other such wholes and against a social and natural background according to Geats. As compared to non-Western cultures, more individuals in Western cultures have such self-construal. The Western viewpoint regards the self as consisting of individual attributes like ambition etc. These attributes are considered to be distinctively one's own even when they are shared with others. The conception of self as independent versus interdependent is a very important part of one's identity. It influences how people think about themselves, how they relate to others, what emotions they experience and how they behave in different situations. The cultural conception of the self is rooted in the norms and values of a culture which further shapes individual experience and the expression of one's self. Japanese and Americans may hold quite different constructs of the self and others, whereas the Americans emphasize attending to the self and appreciating how one is different from others, the Japanese emphasize fitting in with others and maintaining harmonious relationships. Such construals can influence and also determine the nature of individual experience and how one leads his or her life. The Western view looks at an individual as an independent, self-contained entity that possesses a unique set of attributes and behaves in accordance to these attributes. The constraints of the self and others are very powerful and are different in different cultures. The independent view prevails in some part of the American culture and in many Western European cultures. The interdependent self construal is characteristic of Japanese and other Asian cultures, African, Latin American and many Southern European cultures. These two types of construals influence various aspects of cognition, emotion and motivation. Many non-Western cultures emphasize that human beings are fundamentally connected to each other. Hence, the salient norm in these cultures is to maintain interdependence among individuals. This involves seeing oneself as part of a group and recognizing that one's behavior is determined mainly by the thoughts, feelings and actions of others in the group. The Indian view of the self includes a sense of interdependence and 
perceiving oneself as a member of a larger social group. The interdependent self of many Eastern, Southern European and Latin cultures consists of seeing oneself as part of a social relationship and realizing that one's behavior is determined and dependent on what one perceives to be the thoughts feelings and actions of others in the relationship according to Marcus and Kitayama. Hence, the self in such cultures becomes meaningful within the context of a social relationship. Many collectivistic cultures insist on the connectedness of human beings with each other. An important cultural norm here is to maintain interdependence among individuals. The Indian view looks at the self as an open entity shaped by the social and cultural context. Kakar described the idea of interpersonal fusion in Hinduism. In this perspective, when one is separated from others, it is accompanied by a personal and cultural sense of health. These views reiterate the emphasis given to interdependence in collectivistic cultures. This notion is also referred to as sociocentric, collective, allocentric, contextualist and relational. In an interdependent formulation of the self, others are crucial for social comparison and self-validation as well as they are a part of the context. In India, being sensitive to the needs of other people is a moral obligation as compared to Americans. There is a lot of emphasis on belongingness, dependency and reciprocity in Japanese culture. When one encounters either independent or interdependent social contexts, the self-construal is activated over and over again and hence it becomes highly accessible from memory. Marcus and Kitayama also made the distinction between self-ways and folk-ways. Self-ways refer to the independent and interdependent self-construal which mediate social cognitions and behavior. Folkways are important influences which shape one's personality like parenting, education, etc. Other factors which mediate cross-cultural differences are perceptions about the other person and important influences of the mother tongue on social behavior. Consequences of self-construal People usually seek positive states and avoid negative states. Whereas positive states augment one's view of the self, negative states work in an opposite way. A person with an independent view of self seeks information that enhances his or her internal attributes. In contrast, a person with an interdependent view of the self seeks those states which convey that he or she is succeeding in their relationships. Now let us look at the consequences for emotion. Culture plays a crucial role in shaping one's emotional experience. Self-construals affect construals of the social situation others and their relationship. Thus, emotional experience varies according to the construal of the self. Emotional processes may differ according to the self-construal in many ways. The conditions that elicit many emotions differ according to one's self-construal. The kind of emotions which will be experienced as well as their intensity and frequency also varies with culture. 
Another difference is in terms of whether ego focused versus other focused emotions will be experienced. In some emotions such as anger and pride, the main reference point is the individual's internal attributes. Such emotions may be called ego focused emotions since they foster independence. Other emotions such as sympathy and shame have another person as the primary reference point. Such emotions may be called other focused emotions since they foster interdependence. For those with interdependent selves, it is important not to intensely experience ego focused emotions, especially negative emotions like anger since they can have adverse effects on their relationships. Self-construals also affect how people may experience various kinds of emotions. Those with an independent sense of self experience ego-focused emotions more frequently, whereas those with an interdependent conception of self experience more of other focused emotions. Let us now look at the consequences for cognition. Some important consequences of self-construal for cognition are as follows. Individuals with interdependent selves are more attentive to others as compared to those with independent selves. In individuals with interdependent selves, the self and the other are embedded in a specific social context as a result of which the knowledge about the self or others remains specific to the context. The social context also shapes processes such as categorizing and counterfactual thinking. Individuals with interdependent self have a need to know and understand their social surroundings. Kitayama et al. in 1990 examined this idea in a study that involved similarity judgments between self and the other. Generally, the independent self is judged to be more dissimilar to others than others are to the self. Self-representations Specific self-representations are based on the core principles which underlie self-construal. They comprise of the characteristics that are related to the behavioral consequences of self-construal. For example, Japanese self-descriptions are more concrete and role-specific while the American descriptions include more psychological trait characterizations. And Indian's descriptions are more contextualized with reference to roles and social identities whereas American descriptions are context-free and full of abstract personality traits. Information processing Self-construles influence how people perceive and interpret social information. Individuals with independent self-construal usually perceive information that highlights their uniqueness, while individuals with interdependent self-construal usually perceive information which is related to relationships. Memory how knowledge about the self and the other is stored, organized and retrieved from memory is also influenced by self-construal. For instance, memory for people and social events is more accurate in individuals with interdependent self-construal. Individualistic motives versus interdependent motives are even used to organize information about the social world in memory. People with independent self-construal are more likely to ignore the context in the inferences they draw about the social environment whereas those with interdependent 
interdependent self-construal process, social stimuli by paying attention to their relation to the context, according to Kunen, Hanover and Schubert. Consequences for motivation Motivational processes also depend on the nature of the self-construal. Those with interdependent self usually express more of social motives that have the other person as a referent. Also, for those with independent self, there is an effort to express one's needs, rights and capabilities, whereas among those with interdependent self, efforts are made to adjust to the needs and demands of other people and restrain one's inner needs or desires. Self-related motives such as self-enhancement, self-verification, etc. also depend upon the nature of the self. People with interdependent self may experience motives associated with others. The need for achievement may be different as well. For example, Americans generally strive for personal achievement, whereas the Japanese primarily strive for achieving group goals. Another motive which influences the behavior of Westerners is the need to reduce cognitive dissonance. Self-descriptions of people with interdependent self are quite concrete and situation specific. Let us now look at the consequences for self processes. Self-esteem is likely to vary according to self construal. The self-esteem of people with an independent self construal depends on their abilities and achievements. The importance that one attaches to self-esteem and its implications for life satisfaction also vary between independent and interdependent cultures. Evidence for this assertion was reported by Dino and Dina in 1995. In a study of 31 countries, they found that the relation between self-esteem and life satisfaction was lower in interdependent or collectivist countries whereas in independent countries, individuals with high self-esteem reported high life satisfaction. Even in interdependent cultures, those who see themselves positively have higher levels of self-esteem. It has also been found that members of interdependent cultures who have more independent self-construals appear similar to those from independent cultures. Let us look at now at the consequences for social psychological phenomena. Other social behaviors may also depend on the type of self-construal. Thus, for a person with an interdependent self, conformity is a highly valued state and not an inability to resist pressure from majority. Construals of self and gender. Many important gender differences are also influenced by the type of self-construal. It is generally observed that relationships have a lot of significance in women's lives. Women are more likely to have an interdependent sense of self as compared to men and they think of themselves in terms of their relationships with others rather than as independent from others. Individuals with independent self-construal try to maintain a positive view of themselves. Hence, they are more likely to attend to and display self-defining attributes. Individuals with interdependent self-construal maintain a positive view of themselves by protecting the feelings of others. Individualism implies creating 
and maintaining a positive sense of self and having many unique personal attitudes. In terms of well-being, individualism denotes that achievement of personal goals leads to well-being. In terms of the self in collectivism, group membership is a central aspect of identity and therefore traits that are valued reflect the goals of collectivism like maintaining harmony. With regard to well-being and emotional expression, in collectivistic cultures, life satisfaction is achieved by carrying out social obligations. It also implies restraint in emotional expression to ensure harmony in relationships. Individualism implies that judgment and reasoning are oriented toward the person and not the social context and therefore it promotes a decontextualized reasoning style. In contrast, collectivism implies that the social context is quite critical in perception and reasoning. Self-enhancing biases may not be prevalent in many Asian cultures. Self in the Indian culture India has been termed as collectivist in its cultural orientation by many researchers. Some features of the Indian culture relevant to the self are Importance of the family Family is the most important in-group in India. However, slowly there is a breakdown of the joint family system and among the youth today there is a trend toward nuclearization. The second is relationship orientation. Indians prefer to have personalized relationships. These relationships are viewed in a long-term perspective. Third, coexistence of individualistic and collectivistic orientation. Many scholars have noted that Indian self-construal has both individualist as well as collectivistic tendencies. Individuality has less scope in the Indian sense of self as the person is deeply embedded in the social context. However, Indians do pursue private goals and make personal decisions. Sinha and Tripathi in 1994 have noted that Indian self-construal has both individualist as well as collectivistic tendencies. Here, the self does not relate to the own group but is included in the group. The Indian sense of self is continuous with others. Let us now summarize what we have learned from this module. It is now widely understood that culture and self are deeply interrelated to each other. Culture affects how we construe ourselves, which in turn influences our subjective experiences. Marcus and Kitayama differentiated between two fundamentally different perspectives on the self. Members of individualist cultures encounter social contexts which foster an independent self-view. The interdependent self of many Eastern, Southern European and Latin cultures consists of seeing oneself as part of an encompassing social relationship. Emotional experience varies systematically with the construal of the self. There are some important cognitive consequences of self-construal with respect to memory, attention, self-representation, etc. Self-construal also has motivational consequences for individuals in different cultures. Other consequences of self-construal are with respect to self-processes, social psychological phenomena, gender, etc. Some features of the Indian culture relevant to the self are 
importance of the family, relationship orientation and coexistence of individualistic and collectivistic orientations.